Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. So I'm going to start a playlist on my YouTube channel. Uh, basically just going to entitle it vlog. And I'm going to start posting videos every so often with some of my thoughts on things that come up in life, um, events, uh, concepts, concerns, whatever it may be. And given the Eid Khutbah, this uh, past Eid al-Fitr, which was just two or one day ago, depending upon when you celebrated. And that's cool, that's fine, alhamdulillah. Uh, we can celebrate Eid on different days and still worship Allah. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue when um, deciding to follow your community's leadership. I essentially followed the leadership of the masjid that I was asked to give the khutbah at. Now, several people have come up to me in the past few months and with this khutbah and have asked me, what is it, how is it that you prepare for your khutbah? And so I wanted to talk about three things that are extremely important when writing a good khutbah. Number one, is time. You have to invest the time necessary in order to write a good khutbah. And that time that you invest has a long tail and a short tail. Number one, you have to have studied for not a considerable amount of time, but for a decent amount of time in order to have imbibed enough core concepts about Islamic theology and law and character in order to come up with a khutbah. And the biggest problem that people who are out there giving khutbahs uh, have is that they go and they take like a course at Toastmasters or something, or they take a khatib training course by someone who's generally trained as a professional speaker and not as a khatib, and then they pick up random videos and articles off the internet, uh, and then they form them into khutbahs. And so that is pretty disastrous. I actually wrote an article, I'm not sure if it's still up on my site, but um, I wrote an article about that, about that kind of, you know, do-it-yourself attitude. So, you know, you have to have invested time in studying before you go and try to write something that you're then going to deliver in front of a sizable audience of people. If you have not read the Quran cover to cover, if you have not studied the basic tafsir of Surah Juz or, or of Juz Amma, or of Qisar al-Sur, meaning from Surah al-Duha to Surah al-Nas, then, and you have not done the 40 Hadith Nawawi. Now that's a very, very basic level of study that most eight to nine year olds should have finished. If you have not done that, I'm gonna be honest with you, and you don't know basic Tajweed, I'm gonna be honest with you, you have no business giving a khutbah. Absolutely none. The khutbah is maqam al nubuwa You are in the station of prophethood. You are standing in the station of prophethood where the Prophet ﷺ would have stood. And you have to understand what they call mishkat al nubuwa You have to understand the fount of prophecy and, and what was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. You know, where our, so much of our Islam has become a motivational pragmatism that uh, in, in the end is, is, is devoid of, of true meaning. There is meaning there, but is it the type of meaning that leads one to the akhirah? Is it the type of meaning that leads one to worship Allah alone? Is it the type of meaning that leads one to obey the messenger? Is it the type of meaning that cuts off all others from the heart and attaches the heart only to Allah? That's the question. So you have to have studied, you have to put in time, you have to have invested. And I say this, I've said this before and I'll say it again. 
We invest so much time in so many things, except our study of Islam. Many of us, we have a Sunday school level of study of Islam or worse. And yet, we have achieved amazing things in academia, in the hard sciences, in the humanities. But when it comes to our Islam, we somehow want to uh, make broad declarations uh, about the true and false nature of things and we haven't really put in the time. And so it's important to put in the time. I'm not talking here about the conclusions, I'm talking about putting in the time. That's number one. So start studying now if you want to give khutbah in a year. Secondly, is in writing your khutbah, you need to put in time. Again, you can't expect on a Thursday night to simply, uh, you know, magically come up with enough content uh, and ideas and clear concepts and choice of words to be able to deliver something that is effective uh, less than 12 hours later. Or maybe you've even given yourself 24 hours, but if you're starting in the evening, you don't have that much time. So, how much time should you put into writing a khutbah? I would say if you want a, you know, as we say, you know, mashihalik khutbah, you want to, hmm, you know, get, get along, get along khutbah, you can maybe put in five to eight hours. You know, it's, you're just going to be quoting stuff off of a piece of paper, probably rambling in between. You want a good, solid outline, you need to put in at least 10 to 15 hours of just solid pen to paper, going through your ideas, reviewing them, really honing your arguments. And then, and I use arguments there liberally. And then lastly, uh, if you want a really great khutbah, you need 20 plus hours. And that is the, f the formulation, pen to paper, outlining, uh, uh, finding the right texts to quote, um, if you check my YouTube channel, there is a video called on inside my library called "Planning Planning Planning Your Preaching." Uh, it's a really great video. It's a really great book uh, that that will tell you about the long-term planning and even the individual topical planning. Because there's different types of khutbas. There are khutbas that are narrative, there are khutbas that are orative, there are khutbas that are biographical, there are khutbas that are uh, exegesical, meaning they explain a verse or something. There are, um, there are khutbas that are theological, there are khutbas that are pedagogical. There, there are so many different approaches to giving a khutbah. So you have to put in the time and decide the structure, the theme, the structure, and the topic of your khutbah. So that's number one, is putting in the time. Number two is deciding, as I just mentioned, your, your theme, your topic, and your structure. Your theme, your topic, and your structure. And those are different things. So number two, Let's talk about uh, your theme and your topic. In structure, we'll talk about it at the end. Number three. Number two, your theme and your topic. Number one, what do I want, what do I want to achieve from this khutbah? What's the theme? Well, I want people on Friday to understand this, uh, this seemingly unending dispute between people that um, about the, the designation of moon sighting versus calculation versus global sighting versus local sighting on eight. Well, if you do that as a topic, then what, you, what is your theme? Your theme is differences. Your theme is dispute. Your theme is something that's not going to bring the hearts together. So start with your theme. What do I want from a, th what, what theme do I want? What do I want people, the underlying, the meta idea that people are gonna walk away with? Oh, I want people to walk away excited for Ramadan, excited for Eid, uh, who, valuing, um, valuing the idea of Islamic tradition. Uh, okay, if that's a starting point, then I, my theme is encouragement. My theme is attachment. 
my theme is veneration, is respect. And now from there, I understand what my topic is. And when I found my theme, then I can go into my topic. So instead of saying, well, my theme is differences of opinion and my topic is why are people differing all the time about moon sighting? And I say, well, if my theme is encouragement, then my topic's going to be remain steadfast, pick an approach and build on it and allow others to build on theirs. Hugely different. You, you think they're the same, but they're hugely different because what people walk away with is what counts. So will people walk away from your chutbah, from your topic and your theme, thinking, uh, everything sucks, everything's horrible. Why are people always differing? You know, this difference of opinion has been happening for so long. Difference of opinion is not bad. Okay? It shows that people are concerned. It shows that people are invested. It shows that people care. I was once speaking at an interfaith event and a minister said to me, you know, I wish we had the concern that Muslims have for their, da for their daily prayers. Because we used to have five daily prayers in our church. And we used to bow and we used to, and we used to kneel. But then the bowing and the kneeling was taken out because people didn't want to differ. And then the times were, were mashed together because people didn't want to differ. And then we just balled everything up into once a week and now nobody comes to church. So when people, you know, when people differ, it means that people care. And the beauty is that we have, uh, we have the flexibility to allow for a variance of opinion and of approach that um, does not encroach upon our unity. We don't have to be uniform to have unity. But we have to have unicity, tawheed, the worship of Allah, 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 Allah alone, but we may worship at different times. We may all agree that we pray Salat al-Khusuf, the eclipse prayer, but we don't all see the moon at the same time or in the same places. And so it happens and occurs in different times in different places. And that's okay. We all agree on the core, which is the worship of Allah alone. So your theme and your topic have to have, there have to be some congruence between those two things. And choosing those things uh, is very important. And now lastly, um, lastly, we want to talk about structure. And this is where most people go wrong. They don't know how to basic, basically structure, you know, or so let's say structure and approach. They don't know how to structure a khutbah and they don't know how to approach a khutbah. So, um, what do I mean by approach a khutbah? People say, the way of the Prophet ﷺ was that when he would give a khutbah, his eyes would, uh, would, 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 would be red and he would raise his voice and the people would, you know, they would fear Allah. Okay. I mean, that's one description of the khutbah of the Prophet I believe it's the description made by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm just not recalling at this time. But you all know what I'm talking about. And that's true. And that applies in certain types of oratorial khutb, exitorial khutb, khutb that are there for the admonishment and the exhortation of the congregation. But there's also khutb where the Prophet ﷺ, like in the hadith of Arbad ibn Sariyah, anhu, the Prophet, he said, Khutbah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khutbatan wajilat minha al qulub, wa dharifat minha al ayun, or kama qala radiallahu anhu. The Prophet ﷺ gave us a khutbah that our hearts trembled from and our eyes broke out into tears from. So not everything is fire and brimstone, okay? So that's your approach. The prophetic approach is not, is not one, okay? It's not, it's not monochromatic. It can be, you, can, you can approach things differently. And you have to understand your crowd. And you have to understand how they, their emotional state, what they're looking for. That's very important. Otherwise, you can tell somebody something, but you do it too harshly, you turn them off. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered 
Musa and Harun to go to Pharaoh himself and say both of you to him a kind word. People at Jummah aren't Pharaohs. Um, also, the you know the, the, the many, there are many many texts. Some of them just slip my mind now about um, you know speaking to people uh, on their level. Anyway, that's approach. And then the second part of number three, we said approach and we said structure. And structure is where a lot of people go wrong. And a lot of people say to me, Joe, I really like the way that you structure your khutab. I want to know how to structure your khutab. It's not rocket science. It's really easy. It's two things. It's two. It's a, mega, a, a, a macro structure and a micro structure. Macro structure is tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them, then tell them what you told them. This is very, very basic things across the board for speaking. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them, tell them what you told them. Three things. Now comes the question, what are you going to tell them? Goes back to theme and topic. Now, how do you fill in the, spot, the space between tell them what you're going to tell them and tell them and between tell them and tell them what you told them? This is where most people go wrong. And this is where most people don't know how to really uh, 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 work off of the assumed, uh, the assumptions in people's minds that are listening and what people want to hear. Sometimes you have to state the obvious for the person listening. So I use a structure that basically is, I start off with my, with my main premise and then it goes like this. It goes, it goes valley, climb, peak. Valley, climb, peak. So what do I mean by valley? Valley is, here's something wrong, here's something bad, here's something negative, here's what you're probably telling yourself, you're probably saying to yourself, here's, here's what's going on, okay? Here's the climb. Here is some of the texts that address this. Here is why this is important to solve. Here's the, here, here is some of the solutions that you've been given. Peak. This is where you want to be. This is who you can be. This is who you are. This is who Allah wants you to be. But now you're self-doubting again, valley, er, valley. So you take people through that. You only have to do it three, three to five times in a khutbah, okay? Which means that for every climb, that's where you're gonna mention your hadith and your ayat. For every climb, you're gonna have a hadith and an ayat. So literally, you need more, no more, if you're gonna do that three times, you need no more than three ayat, three ahadith for an entire khutbah. A lot of people, they're just going on and on and on and on. You have to do right? This is delusional with, 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 with what they're saying. They think that if they overload you, that you're, you're somehow going to be, you're going to come out on top. And that's not the case. It certainly wasn't how the Prophet ﷺ would give khutab. He was succinct and brief. Brevity is the mark of a good khutbah. And it's hard to do. I remember giving, you know, first time giving khutbah, um, you know, it's, it's a struggle. You know, you, if you were allowed to speak what you, were, what you wrote down, you would be seeking, speaking for an hour and a half. But thank God the masjids limit you to a half an hour. But then you cut yourself off because you haven't fully thought through the theme and the topic. You haven't structured things. You haven't picked the text. Why haven't you picked the text? Because you don't know the text. Why? Because you haven't invested the time to understand what texts apply to the theme and the topic and fit into the structure that you need and have the approach necessary for that topic, that theme, that structure, those texts. So, uh, we're almost at 20 minutes now, and every time I do these, I'm sitting here talking about succinctness, every time I do this, I'm going to speak for three to five minutes, and then it comes out to like 15 to 20 minutes. So anyways, so, you know, these are the three things that you need to look at, you know, you need to look at you know, um, uh, go back through the video, you know, write down these points. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll, I'll be happy to expand on these points um, in, in future videos. But I figured I would put this out there because, uh, you know, I, I, I think that we need better khatibs. And, and we're never going to get better khatibs. And we're never going to get better community uh, teachers until we get people who are investing the time to actually take and spend 
learning. Inshallah ta'ala, one of my goals of 2019 or for, for the rest of 2019 is, and I mentioned this in my Eid khutbah, is to celebrate those who celebrate me and to invest in those who invest in me and to work with those who want to work with me. So I'm looking forward to investing more in those who want to learn and investing more in those who want to improve themselves and inshallah ta'ala surrounding myself with people that want to become better. And I hope that I can lean on you all to become a better person and to be and to, and to really uh, you know make a benefit make a make a difference. And I hope that you all feel that you can lean on me as well. And so that's it for this vlog for, I don't even have the date and the time up, but uh, we, uh, you know, we're, we're you know, post Eid al-Fitr 2019, it's Thursday. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, I'll see you maybe this weekend when I have some more thoughts about other things. So, Jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.